Hi, and welcome. Thanks for joining me. I've got a special guest, and I've got Kate from Cherry Red Army. Uh, we're going to give his uh, thoughts about, about Bournemouth. As you know, it's Barnsley against a very good Bournemouth side coming up. Uh, we need a win. Is it going to happen against Bournemouth? I don't know. So it's great to have you on, Kirk, and thanks for joining me, mate. No, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, so when we met in September, obviously, your bet is 3-0. And a lot of Barnes fans at the time, I've, I should imagine, had been thinking it's going to be such as yourselves and Fulham going to be fighting it for automatic spots. Uh, you've been, obviously, following Bournemouth and you've got uh, inside uh, knowledge about, about Bournemouth. How's your season gone on from there then? Uh, when you when we bet us in September 3-0? Yeah, we need to sort of break it up into chunks, I think, because you hit us in a, in a period where we went on to be like unbeaten in 15. And it was a spell where there were some games where we did hurt football teams and you have to put Barnsley in that bracket. It was a 3-0 win at home, a couple of goals from Zamora, one from Solanke. But other matches that we did win in that first quarter of the season were 1-0s, lucky to win 2-1, great saves from Travers. So... Since then, obviously, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. We have picked up a few wins here and there, but it's been a tough time for the Cherries. Fortunately, though, Neil, um, other teams around us don't seem to want promotion either, apart mm. from Fulham. So um, that's that's sort of the positive for Bournemouth, is that we've let a lot of points go, but we're still in the mix. That's the most important thing, because uh, we always go into second half and we always look at like other teams what might have a bit of dodgy spells and stuff like that. And there's been some games cancelled, obviously, with COVID-related issues and uh, lack of players available for uh, respective teams. We know because we had, um, I was against Nottingham Forest, Stoke City cancelled due to either in our camp or opposition camp. So, fixtures are going to be coming back and hitting us. Having said that, uh, do you think that Bournemouth will be making any signings in this January transfer window to strengthen certain areas? So we've made two already. We signed James Hill from Fleetwood. Seems like a good addition for the future. Mm -hmm. He's had 13 games at Fleetwood, one goal, and he's already in the England under-20 side, I think. Ethan Lerd made a switch from Swansea via Man United on loan to Bournemouth. He's currently still not ready, even though he's played about 20 games already in the Championship. Um, he's struggling to get to fitness since his move, so he won't be available on Saturday. Um, some key areas for, for Bournemouth that we're looking to strengthen and where we struggle to really hurt teams of late. Um, we're looking for an offensive attacking midfielder in the centre to help billing out. We're looking for a wide player to the left. That looks to be someone like Tom Lawrence. Mm. Just got to try and get a deal done with, obviously, the issues that Derby are having. And then giving support to Dom Solanke because he scored 18 goals for us and we've heavily relied on him. Outside of that, we have had goals from billing. We have had goals from Anthony, but only one from Christie and barely any goals from our central midfielders. So, that's where we need to impact. And I think Kiefer Moore is, is an option for us that we're looking at potentially plan B if we're trying to get back in the game and throwing long balls into the box. So three players wanted and we're, we're going to probably dig deep to try and get those players. Yeah. Uh, regarding Barnes' transfer policy at minute, the 25, 26 days into uh, window, I think there's only about five days left and we're making no headway to sign anybody. But g given our position as well, I'm thinking we need some kind of leaders on pitch because the, the young kids that are going out at the minute, they're just like drained the confidence, drained uh, everything really. They just don't seem to be in the game. Uh, when we played Nottingham Forest, but to be fair, they really didn't get into second gear, Nottingham Forest. And even watching as a fan, even Nottingham Forest commentators were like laughing. They couldn't believe how poor we were playing, not tracking back, doing basics kind of thing. And you'd think it'd be just a given. And I'm wanting to see some kind of input from a, our, our owners seem to go, when you mentioned experience, we always seem to go, well, we're not signing a 30 odd year old player. Or we're not necessarily asking about that, but what we are asking is to sign a, a, an experienced football guy that comes in, what's got a bit of know-how, a bit of leadership quality and someone that can come in and make a difference and like basically take it with scruff at neck and say, look, this is standard we need to play, this is where we need to get at. We just look at Derby County. Prime example, what you've just said there, uh, we're one of the players that you've got to try and sort some issues at. Derby County, we've had a transfer in bar going uh, points deductions, yet they're fighting for their lives. And you can tell that the passion and they've got them believing. So my worry is being on a Barnsley fan is that stuff what's happening off the pitch is like affecting it, what's on the pitch is regard players. Because when you look at the majority of our players from last season, 
<laughs> we've still got them. So what's happened, and that's the stuff that's going off uh, off the pitch. Um, so just touching on players and that, with, uh, what you're on about strengthening certain positions. At this moment in time, always play, always been the standout players for such as yourself at Bournemouth, uh, Kirk. Yeah, so maybe at the uh, start of the formation, Mark Travers has surprised a lot of Bournemouth fans. Um, he had a tough opening day last season. He came in again at the start of this season after Begovic went to Everton. And some of us fans, including myself, thought he needed a loan lower down in the leagues. But he's really stepped up. He's had some unbelievable games, uh, lots of clean sheets. I think he was top goalkeeper in the division at one point, might still be. Maybe mm -hmm. we need to check that. Then you go right to the top end of the pitch and you're looking at Dom Solanke. He yeah. scored 15 goals last season. I think if he had notched a few more, we might have not had to play Brentford in the playoffs. Um, but he's notched on, he's kicked on from that 15 of last season and he's two away from 20 goals. And we've always said if Dom Solanke can get to 20 goals, there's a good chance that Bournemouth will be high in the table and have a really good chance of promotion. He just needs a bit more support, as I said, from other areas around the pitch to, to keep those goals flowing in. So two big players there, one at the back and one up top. And, and then we've got extra quality in the side. The likes of Christie on his days, brilliant. Billings had, added eight goals and Jaden Antony's uh, playing. John Zamora, probably mentioning too many here, but Jordan Samora came in at left back. We didn't expect him to be as mm. good as he's been. And he scored, as I said, a couple of goals against Barnsley in that, yeah. that home fixture. So um, a great talent. Yeah, I was impressed with him when he, when he played, uh, to be fair. Well, a lot of pace, a lot of attacking options. And one thing I, uh, I saw with Scott Parker's side is that similar things you were trying to implement at Fulham as well. Uh, but, you know, attacking option, that width and stuff like that. And he... I know what he did at Fulham when he came to Bournemouth. Um, as regards me, for players what I'm looking out for at Barnsley, on his day, you'd like to see Morris, but again, he didn't play uh, not not Forest. Uh, Carlton Morris, sorry, sorry, didn't play at Nottingham Forest, whether that were COVID or whether he'd actually got an injury. Colin Woodrow's out for probably rumoured to be in between another 10 to 12 weeks. So that's his, uh, one of his main strikers missing. Then we're looking at rest at Park, and to be fair, we're chopping and changing about a lot in midfield. We don't even have a settled side in midfield. His defence, on his day, they can play, you know, pretty shut-out players, but individual errors, again, Matt, Matt Anderson trying to play it ball out from back and then lose it cheap, cheaply and then we end up 1-0 down. And then you can just see confidence drain from rest of players. And that's why I'm, like, saying that we need some kind of... Someone to come in and say, look, we haven't got time to be playing nicely, you know, passive football. We need to be more direct and get it going and actually make a difference. Brad Collins, for me, he's been one of probably, I like, you know, stars of the season. And it says a lot when you, you rely on your goalkeeper to <laughs> be your best player. And it's, I think it proves it all when you see as goal scored. I think we've scored 16 in the league. You know what I mean? It's like embarrassing. But I think we are the only team in BFL that's not adding a way win. And again, stats again, you, you just, it mounts per mounts and mounts up all for the wrong reasons. Uh, what's your take on Scott Parker then? Have you been impressed with his uh, style of play when he's come in? Is there a bit of a 50-50 um, judgment still out, uh, Kirk? Judgment's very much out after that loss against Hull City, 60-40 yeah. uh, at the start of the season. Um, mm. Some fans were forced, some were a bit worried. The unbeaten 15 helped him, but I said, as I said, we weren't, clinical throughout that unbeaten 15 there was a lot of games that were touch and go and we got a lot of luck and I think what we started to see here is when we haven't got the luck we haven't forced enough mm. and we haven't been able to really pin back football teams and put teams away you look at the lights of Fulham they look like they don't care if they can see goals they're just going out and winning football matches I yeah. think we have a squad similar to Fulham that we could do that unfortunately we do have a manager in Scott Parker who looks very organised I think I said that he looks like he's got a 10 point plan for everything mm. that we do on a football pitch I'm not sure you need that in every game I'd like to see us go to Barnsley and you've just said that Corley Woodrow's out I mean that's already brought a smile to my face <laughs> they haven't got the likes of DK that they had last season was a handful Bradley Collins when I saw him last season great great goalkeeper you said for you this season but I think he's a goalkeeper you can take a chance on, sometimes erratic. I don't know if he's still that, yeah. but he definitely was last season. And if you put him under pressure, maybe there's a mistake in there. But the problem that Bournemouth fans are struggling with is when we don't score the chances that we get, and we had three against Hull, and we continue to play football in front of football teams very slow, 
very side to sides and it's not creative, it allows teams like Barnsley, like Hull to gain in confidence. And for you, the big task for you on Saturday was to stay in the game. Yeah. You look at the likes of Preston winning nil nil, beat us. Hull City winning nil nil, beat us. And um, if you can do that, you'll take confidence. And it's key for Bournemouth that we score an early goal. I, I was watching the Forest game the other day and I think the first goal inside 15 minutes was a killer. And potentially, if the Cherries can do that, then maybe we can have another three or four nil win at Oakwell. But championship's yeah. not that easy. And um, the table will say we should win this. Mm-hmm. But I'm going into this game not sure anymore. Really? Currently. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, you, you just highlighted them back. Uh, we always seem to start off good for 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and then we just seem to run out of ideas and it just seems to be right. We'll, you know, we'll not go as attacking, we'll just like play it, see how it goes. But as soon as that first goal in, uh, we conceded first goal. I mean, we were, I think we had two yellow cards in the first 10, 15 minutes, one central defender and one in midfield. I'm thinking, Young players, too early. We're up against a pretty decent Knox Forest with Steve Cooper. I'm thinking we're going to get a record here. But again, Mads Anderson trying to play a ball out from back. He ran on a yellow card. He lost possession. And I thought if he pulls him down, he's going to, he's going to go his walk. And he didn't pull him down. Lost ball and they went through. As soon as that goal went in, you could see his... Just mannerism at players, it was, well, I mean, you know, we've got his own players arguing amongst one another. We've got Jordan Millions having a go, and it's like, you know, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You know what I mean? It just goes to show the frustration on pitch. And I'm, and I was going to get around to the score uh, coming up, like, but in my opinion, I think that you'll be coming up, and I, I, all I can see is the Bournemouth win. Um, obviously, mate, I'm a Bounds fan. I wanted to win, I wanted to win every game possible, but uh, ideally, my heart says I'd like to win 2-1, but, you know, my head's thinking Bournemouth are going to come here and probably win 3 nil. I don't know what you'll think on that. I look at this squad and I look at the talent inside it and that scoreline should be 100% spot on. The problem is, Neil, that we've only taken four points out of nine against teams in the bottom three hmm. and teams that potentially put a low block in and try and consolidate us. We've struggled to break down... As I said, I would probably have gone into this game before November saying this will be 3-0, just mm. like it was back at Dean Court in September. But I'm going for 2-1. Maybe you'll get a goal. And I think that maybe if we can score an early goal, that could be the one that decides everything for us. Yeah. And potentially a mistake from Barnsley to help us will gain us in a bit of confidence. And we need to score. The longer we don't score, the game becomes even. And then it and then it's it's up for grabs. So, mm. uh, but going for two one, I've got to back my team, haven't I, Neil? Oh, of course so, you have. Um, You've got to back your team, yeah. And I'm um, I'm up at six o'clock in the morning. I'll be making the journey. I'm looking forward to it. I've never been to the Oakwell, so um, <laughs> it's going to be a long take... day for you, a long journey, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, you want to go? For, you want to go for three points? It's been great to have you on, Kirk. Anyway, I, I really appreciate it. Nice talking to you, and it's nice it's nice gaining insight from other fans as well because us as Barnsley fans, we can say, "Oh, you're going to lose," but it's it's nice getting your perspective on it. So I appreciate you for joining me, Kirk. Thank you. No, really appreciate it. Good luck for the rest of the season. You've got games in hand, but obviously we need a Cherries win on Saturday. <laughs> and same to you. I hope it all goes well for you, but obviously I hope it's hap- it happens after Saturday. Uh, <laughs> but I hope you do get promoted because what I have seen, you, you know, early on in the season, you did look a decent side. Uh, who knows? You know, you might have a, a win against us. It might kickstart it again for you and go on a, a, another run. But uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, please like it, subscribe. Uh, Kurt from Cherry's Red Army. Please check him out. Knows his stuff. He's a very, very good guy. Uh, very knowledgeable. Thanks for joining you, Reds. <laughs>